I actually went live. Okay. I was getting a circle of depth there for a couple of, couple of seconds. Well, this is Adrian I go Capricorn Tigress of Astrology, a look inside. And I wanted to come and do a mid-month astrological chat type of situation. And the main reason I want to do that is because I had the most incredible experience in the month of, um, of October uh, dealing with this Libra um, new moon that had the Libra new moon at 15 degrees and the sun was at 15 degrees. Um, and that day there was something else that was very close to that. And of course, we all know that Pluto is at 18 degrees uh, transiting Capricorn. And I am a Capricorn with my sun at 14, almost 15 degrees and my ascended at 17 degrees. And um, I was born with Saturn in uh, Aquarius. It is the chart ruler of my chart, and it is in my first house uh, in the sign of Aquarius. And what happened uh, was when the sun, the transiting sun and moon squared my natal Uranus or natal sun and ascendant, I was hospitalized and um, it's very odd because I was hospitalized because of pains that I experienced in my legs. And I thought that was very interesting because as we all know, uh, Capricorn rolls the knees area and uh, Aquarius basically rolls the legs. And so I was basically I felt as though I was uh, possibly facing never being able to walk again. It was really, truly frightening. And I found myself talking about it quite a bit on Facebook all week long because it just freaked me out. I, you know, I can talk about um, what happens to Capricorns when Saturn is around, when Saturn hits your sun, or when Saturn goes to the ascendant, um, you know, or I could talk about the fact that Saturn is known as father time and that, um, you know, when we start to age, uh, Saturn is, is usually there when we begin to realize, hey, we're getting older, or we're aging, or we start to feel the age come upon us. And literally as Saturn sits on my sun in Capricorn, I feel the weight of Saturn. And um, I, I, I can only say that the best way to put what I went through was I was traumatized. I, I really felt totally traumatized by the recent new moon uh, that was conjunct the sun. It, you know, I am just hoping and praying because one of the things that my daughter said to me um, after I got back from emergency and from the hospital and whatever, was I was scared and crying. And of course we were trying to make sure I had all the proper medications that you need to make sure that, you know, my legs were, really kind of seizing up like they were going into rigor mortis. It's the closest way to put it. And I, I can't actually tell you how frightening that was because no matter what I did, no matter if I stood, if I sat, if I laid down, my legs were still seizing and going into like this crazy rigor mortis thing. And I have thought about this 
as an astrologer, because I'm about to share something. I wrote about it because I thought it was interesting. But one of the things that I realized was that I do have Saturn in Aquarius. And Saturn, um, of course, means constricting and restricting, right? So think about the seizing motion, constricting, you know, letting go, constricting, letting go. And that's what it was doing. Um, when I think about it, you know, going into those horrible seizing spasms. So I'm going to share something that I wrote uh, at a Capricorn group on Facebook. And then um, I will kind of go into an aha moment I had after I wrote it. So I had here, um, uh, I'll just start here. I've been through so much since the last new moon in Libra. I can scarcely believe it's only been a week. I almost died or at least it felt like it. My legs seized up uncontrollably, controllably so bad. It was like they were going into rigor mortis. It was horrific. I was literally screaming in the hospital. They gave me very powerful painkiller. It's called the lot it. They give it to car crash victims. That's how bad it was. And they put me on muscle relaxers for the rest of my life. It's called methocarbonyl. For the record, I am a Capricorn with Capricorn rising. My chart ruler is Saturn. I have Capricorn and Aquarius sharing the first house with Mercury and Saturn in Aquarius. My first, uh, for those who do not know, Capricorn and Aquarius rule the legs. And I was once in a wheelchair for seven years. It was a horror story. And just know that I lost 300 pounds from dancing. I started dancing and I've done this for five years now. Now that I have Saturn conjunct my Capricorn sun in the 12th house, it is quick and it's quickly approaching my ascendant. I know my challenge is how to strengthen my legs under such a heavy burden. It takes all my strength to walk and come and sit at the computer now. It is incredible. I worked so hard to be strong, yet my legs have betrayed me during the sun new moon conjunction in Libra on the 8th of October. It was exactly squared my sun in Capricorn and conjunct my ascendant as well. It was a nightmare. It still is because transiting Pluto in Capricorn is sitting on my first house ascendant as well. I know I will have to face the dark pain and agony of Pluto on the ascendant, but I have never in life known such pain. It has created a deep fear within me now. It take, I now take anxiety meds for the fear and the tears. I'm glad to report that so far, my recent blood work indicates that I am otherwise healthy. And they think this could have been caused by the onset of celiac disease. Lately, whenever I eat flour products, the seizing and spasms start all over again. I have been put on a zero wheat, zero dairy, zero nuts, zero soy diet. Since my body has already developed severe sensitivities to coffee, chocolate, raisins, nuts, grapes, wine, chicken, tomatoes, and peanut butter, it now even reacts to onions. I am sure I will lose the rest of the weight I once had gained. It is amazing to think that I was once over 500 pounds for seven years of my life. I now believe that the universe provided the food to gain that weight like a squirrel who hibernates in winter and packs on additional weight. Pluto was in the 12th house for years. Now that Pluto is in the first house and Saturn is quickly approaching the first house as well. I am sure the weight loss will be rapid now that my diet has been so severely limited. I am completely at a point, I am literally at a point in my life where eating certain foods could kill me. It freaks me out to know as an astrologer that this is just Saturn in the first house 
doing its Saturn in the first house thing. Anyway, thanks for letting me share my Capricorn story of struggle and all it takes for me to continue climbing that mountain every single day. I will not give up. If anything, all of the challenges have renewed this, my desire to live as wisely and as fully as possible. Sending out much love and light to all. Stay strong, Caps. We are adept at climbing out of and over any and every obstacle. So that is the letter that I wrote. And I realized after I wrote that, and, you know, I'm going on and on about Capricorn and about Saturn and about Pluto and the first house and Saturn and Aquarius. And that's all true. But then I realized that all of that Saturn and all of that Capricorn created this odd lopsided thing with cancer. And cancer does sit in my sixth house, which we all know as astrologers that the sixth house rules our health. And more importantly, our food or diet is, is there, is shown there. And Saturn is opposing my sixth house. It is, and of course, cancer, the opposite of Capricorn, rules food. So the food that I eat is literally putting my life, the sun, essence, Capricorn, in jeopardy. And I I thought it was just so odd that the Capricorn, you know, load over there on the opposite side really highlighted what was going on in the sixth house because it sets up oppositions to some asteroids and uh, things that are going on in the sixth house. So it's, I just wanted to share that story because I, I do think my story is a little bit over the top crazy that it's occurring. Um, there are some other things that are contributing to this food issue. Like I have Venus and Scorpio in the 10th house, which is ruled by Capricorn. The 10th house is Capricorn. And I have Venus progress transiting through my first house. So all, you know, and Venus, of course, that also rules food. I have a Taurus moon. The moon, of course, rules cancer. Taurus rules food. It all ties in. It's so crazy. And I just wanted to share that because I'm wondering how many other Capricorns were really deeply affected by that new moon in Libra that occurred in the beginning of the month and just a few days ago, a week or so ago. Um, it was devastating for me. So I'm just wondering if anyone out there hears my story and if they have a story to, sh to share, please feel free to share your new moon Capricorn square story. If you're a cancer um, and you were affected uh, by what was going on with this new moon Libra sun conjunction, um, share that too. I would be interested in knowing how cancers are being affected by what ha was set up with this new moon. And also Aries. I'm wondering how Aries themselves were affected because of course that would have all fell into your seventh house axis, you know, this because Libra is naturally the seventh house and Aries would have put the Libra in the seventh house. So I'm wondering how your relationships um, worked out. Anyway, it was just an interesting thought and I wanted to share that with everyone because it was something that deeply affected my life. And I'll stop running on at the mouth about myself. I wanted to quickly go over uh, where some of the planets are and also give the um, um, inside tip that if you go to astrologyalookinside.com, there is now a button over to the right hand side that says more. And when you click on that button, there is a cornucopia of fun stuff under there. We've got our monthly calendar is there, um, which has the monthly uh, transits and daily transits. So you can actually keep an eye on your daily transits now at Astrology and Look Inside. 
Um, it has the monthly horoscopes there, which you can find them right here on face on um, Facebook on YouTube. But it's nice to know that they're also you can find them on the website as well now. And um, so I'm just trying to add more fun things to the website, little secret little fun things that um, can keep you busy when you're there. And let me go ahead and pull up where wh what's going on as of today. So as of today, the 15th of October, 2018, the sun is at 22 degrees of Libra. Thank God that is moved to 22 degrees. Now that is still technically square that Pluto in, uh, you know, in Capricorn, but it's wide. It's a wide square now because the sun has moved forward. It's not quite on that Pluto um, it's about four to a little under four degrees, like three degrees away. Um, also today, the moon is in Capricorn. I didn't even realize that. I just looked now and realized that the moon is in Capricorn on my sun, on my ascendant. I am hoping that this means my body is going to redo itself and I will not have any more really painful experiences beyond this day. Um, Mercury is in uh Scorpio and Venus is in Scorpio and they are conjunct right now because Venus is retrograding. So it's actually pulling away. But I, you know, this would have been a Mercury Venus connection over the last couple of days. So that, could, that, that should have been pretty pleasant for communication for a lot of people. Um, the only thing though, is that Mars is still in Aquarius at 12 degrees. And so it's a wide square, but it would have set up a a wide square with Mercury and with Venus over the last few days. So I can see where that could have caused some problems um, for a couple of people. And, um, I, you know, for a lot of people, that Saturn and Uranus trine, it's still technically trine, even though it's, you know, it's now in almost three, it's like two, almost three degrees apart now. But because Uranus is retrograding and it's about to go back into Aries for a little while. Um, so, you know, we're going to get a little bit of relief from that crazy trine, that Saturn Uranus trine. Man, I really felt that Uranus down in in uh, in Taurus was nothing nice. And we're going to have to deal with that because once it, it, it treks back to uh, Aries, it's going to pop right on back to Taurus again. So whatever we've been feeling over the last few weeks, that's going to be, or months actually, that's going to be coming back. We're going to be feeling that again. And that's a little bit eerie. Um, I'm just hoping that had nothing to do with anything. So let me, I'm going to do one other thing because that's why I pulled up the website. I want to make sure I'm actually looking at the actual aspects. I'm just running off at the mouth. I'm clicking on the more button on astrology. I look inside because I'm going to use our own calendar. It's making me accept my own cookie policy. Okay, so <laughs> let me see if I've got it here. Monthly. So this uh, here. Okay, yeah, here we go. So starting on, as I mentioned earlier, Mercury is in Scorpio and it is conjunct Venus today. Um, uh, on the 19th, Mercury is going to trine Neptune, but it's also going to square Mars. Now that is going to be interesting. Just the fact that it's, you know, it's also going to be square Mars. I, I have a feeling that that could cause some trouble, uh, with communications and with some creative ideas. That's Friday. So just be aware that, you know, something really could upset the apple cart Friday because there is an ugly square Mars going on um, that day. On the 23rd of October, the sun is going into Scorpio. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Sun, we're going into Scorpio. That should be very good for most um, earth signs and, and, and water signs that the sun is going into Scorpio. I'm looking forward to it as a Capricorn because it will place the sun up in my 10th house of career. And so things should start really popping and hopping, but it's not going to start popping and hopping until after 
the full moon on the 24th. Because the moon will be full in Taurus. And you heard me just say that the sun is going to be in, in, uh, in Scorpio the day before, right? So, and they are going to be opposed because Taurus is going to be at one degree and 13 to seconds. And it's going to be probably like almost an exact opposition for a moment. And I don't know where Scorpio and Taurus falls in your horoscope, but mark the date. 23rd, 24th, mark the date, Scorpio is opposing Taurus. I'm getting all excited about it because on the 26th, the sun in Scorpio is going to conjunct Venus in Scorpio. It's too early for it to really make a huge impact in my life, but I have Venus in Scorpio. So I'm really looking forward to the Venus in Scorpio and sun in Scorpio moving forward in that area of my life. And hoping, I believe in miracles. Because for myself, this is all going to start, you know, connect on my Neptune. And that means miracles are afoot for myself. I'm hoping that for you guys, that you will also have good experiences with this sun in Scorpio experience. Now, on the 29th, definitely a good experience will be the sun training the moon in Cancer. That should be, that's all water. That's, that's into intuition. Like that should be a very intuitive. It might be even a little bit um, over emotional that day because can't, you know, the moon is in cancer. Uh, watch out for tears. Yeah. Watch out for tears that day. I, you know, just watch out for getting too over emotional over things and letting, things overwhelm because that could that could happen that day on the 30th of October Mercury enters Sagittarius and that is going to actually be a good thing because that means our minds are going to be thinking of much more creative and you know just more jovial fun loving big expansive ideas things get a little heavy and dark sometimes when there's a lot of Scorpio emphasis. So it would be nice to get that Sag emphasis going. It's a fire sign. It should add some fire, some spark back into your communications. Again, it should be really nice. Big ideas, um, a desire for travel. Um, it should be great when Mercury enters Sagittarius. Then on the 31st, uh, well, Venus leaves Scorpio because don't forget, Venus is retrograding and it's going to leave Scorpio uh, on the 31st and it's going to enter Venus. Um, Venus is going to enter Libra on the 31st. And so that all of that emphasis is going to be in Libra and not Scorpio. But the big thing is that Venus is going to be opposed that crazy Uranus that day. So be aware of that. Venus will be opposed to Uranus on the 31st of October. And this, you know, when I just say the words Venus and Uranus together, my first thought is, wow, be careful of, you know, doing crazy things, you know, around love or relationships or in, in you know, any anything kinky, I would say, be careful that day. It is the 31st. It is Halloween. You need to be careful, child. And so that is how I will end <laughs> for my mid month. And I will start working on making the videos for the month of November. I want to get that done before the full moon gets here. And so, because once it's the full moon, I'm lazy and nothing gets accomplished. But I, I want to thank all of my followers and uh, especially those from Astrology, A Look Inside on Facebook for their patience with me during the month of October. I literally have felt over the, you know, since the beginning of the month that I've been like ailing, like, you know, like an old woman with her little shawl and her medications up on the sofa, just healing from whatever ailments that occurred when that square, that new moon square to my son, man, I knew it was going to be ugly a month out, but I didn't know it was going to be that ugly. 
my gosh, just thinking about all the screaming and yelling I did at the hospital. And so, you know, be cautious of really ugly squares like that. There was something I said earlier, we're going to we're going to have a conjunction um, square. Be cautious of those conjunction square days. OK, and I'm going to leave it with that. If you have not already go to and visit the website and sign up for the blogs there. I haven't been doing it a lot lately, but I will. I promise at astrology, a look inside dot com. And you can always order a free sample uh, mini reading from me on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash astrology, a look inside. Anyway, you guys, this has been Capricorn Tigress, your friendly astrologer, sending out much love and light to all. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you soon when I work on those November horoscopes. <laughs> oh, I just noticed there was a, someone had something here. It says, okay, so I've been having bad luck. I think it might have something to do with being Aries. I've taken three kicks to the balls. This woo. Sorry, I missed. I was missed your comment. God, was just saying how awful it could be for Aries. Caps and cancers hopefully things will perk up when planets start moving into scorpio and sagittarius that's sagittarius i'm looking forward to that that mercury Me for uh, uh, I will put that there too. Try to give them my little thingy here. Uh, uh look inside to order. A free sample reading. Okay, so I I hope that that's going to be okay. Oh, oh, I didn't do that right. Maybe I need should have put a spark. <laughs> Let me do this again. You guys, I hope well, when this, it repeats back, I don't know if I'm going to clear this or not. But at least I'm having fun doing it. Okay, then on it says groups. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I just wanted to put that there and I apologize for anyone who was here and I missed you earlier. So sorry, I was at astro.com looking and at astrology look inside looking at the monthly calendar. So anyway, you guys, I'm almost at a half an hour and I want to go ahead and, and uh, stop this for the night. Thank you for listening. Um, if you're getting this secondhand and please make sure you subscribe so that you can be in a know whenever I have my next, next talks. I'm going to be doing those monthly astrology reports soon. So keep an eye out for those. Okay, everyone, I'm going to get going. Much love and light to all. Bye now.